Um, I'm going to start off with the portrait uh, proportions first, basic stuff, size of the eyes, all that. And then I'm going to jump into uh, how to make the skin feel a little bit more. It's, it's, it's there. It's definitely there. I think you have an amazing um, hold on the colors and the, and the warms and the cools. But um, uh, let's, let's sort of talk a little, bit, but a little bit more about the light source color and question that as well. But since it is a bit abstract, you have a little bit of an abstraction going on, um, I might just let that go and just leave the skin as is. But what I'm doing right now is I'm balancing everything along vertical and horizontal lines. Just like this. And the chin needs space. The chin needs its own kind of bit right here because just because we're looking at her from this quarter view, which isn't really that intense a three quarter view, it doesn't mean that the skin, the chin suddenly has like a side view to it. Sometimes the chin is just very, very slightly in three quarter view and the face still moves down towards here. Because you look at her cheeks here, she's got a bit of fat here. We need to show that off. And she doesn't have much of a high cheekbone. The light hits this area instead of this area. This area would mean she has this intense cheek cheekbone. So what I'm trying to do here is balance out what you've indicated with your light source on this side and create the perfect cross section of it on this side. Okay, so the eyebrows are a little bit um, asymmetrical as well. And that's fine, stuff like eyebrows, eyelids, if they're not symmetrical, that's okay, but they need to be generally symmetrical, just very, very similar to each other um, in location. Just like that. And I'll fix up this edge because this is all very, very cropped very much, and we need to fix that up. The neck also needs to be fixed up, just like this. The neck ends where the jaw ends, and since the jaw ends off, this is her jaw, or this sort of a corner of her jaw, ends off off screen, then this neck area recedes off screen, so it goes just a little bit behind the head. Got to take the scarf off because it's getting in the way. Mike, sorry, one sec. <clears throat> Next up would be this side of her shoulder it's a little bit I don't know if the veil is on her shirt but I think it's the shoulder that you've drawn here so I'm gonna try to balance that out the shoulder was a little bit kinda drooping completely outside of the skeletal symmetry so everyone can hear me right Everything. Okay. and then the bulge of the arm the upper arm bulges a little bit I think you did amazingly. I think this... Just don't change anything about this. All you really need to do is keep all of this unrealistic and abstract and just focus on her face. Proportions in the face aren't something that you can abstract with. You know, you have to abstract with it. Um, it's very little to get away with... It's very difficult to get away with um, disproportionate portra portraiture um, by saying that it's abstract. It's not... It doesn't work like that because a disproportionate feature is a disproportionate feature. People aren't going to read it. They're going to say that looks weird or a little bit off. So before, after. Just balancing out the basics here. And then now I'm just going to go in with my brush and I'm going to try to keep this area without that intense bulge on it. Just trying to make sure that whatever is visible here, whatever the story is here, with where, where the highlights travel on this on switch, that's exactly what I'm trying to show off here on the side. Because it, it, you're seeing the side of it, you're seeing one contour line out of many contour lines when we have a three quarter view. You see this shadow here that this, this sort of moves into into the temple where the third quarter or the last quarter begins. This needs to be represented here on this side with an adjacent shadow that slowly goes off into into the shadow of the beneath the veil. The blue you have here, she's got a hooded eye that needs to be represented here as well. The light will reach this area. It is not a very deep set socket line that she has. 
and then we've got the shine in her eyes on the lower eyelid. As you know, the skin of the lower eyelid is more stretched, or actually less stretched, a little bit stretched, and very, very oily. Um, so it has a little bit more shine to it. And this area here is where you have the most light, so that means you're telling me this area here is the biggest bulge. If we saw her face from the side, we would see a little bit a little bit like this from the side. Her cheekbone is pretty low. This is where the shiniest point is on the cheekbone. So that means that this area would be protruding, catching some light. Just like that. And again, the rest of the face recedes into a shadow. Just like this, slowly moving into a shadow. Emerging out of that veil. And what happens with the reflective skin, though, is that it doesn't just recede into shadow. Because it, it's a very uh, shiny upper layer of skin, it'll reflect all the colors around it. So this is a white veil. It's going to reflect this exact color. So I'm going to throw that here and then slowly erase away at it. That's going to be the secondary light source. This cheek is very, very close, very close to this veil. That's where we're going to get some, but it can't be such a highlight that we've completely left the local color. It's, it's still very, very dark skin, so it has to be a very delicate reflection. And it's not a mirror skin. Her skin isn't a mirror, so the reflective potential is significantly decreased. We've got hairs, we've got skin cells that aren't always perfectly smoothed out. So the face, the human face, isn't that reflective. So I'm just reflecting that veil there. This might not happen in real life. It depends on the skin. It depends on the makeup. What people always do with makeup is that they use powder. That powder cancels out all that shine and reflectivity. It doesn't really read well on cameras. It's generally a bad look. But if you want to create a less Barbie doll looking person, I recommend adding a little bit of shine. A little bit of shine is always good. Cutting off this chin and then tucking this neck behind. And then the net that the shirt moves around, wraps around the neck area like that. So I, I'm not using the brush you use, I'm very sorry. I'm kind of just getting rid of your textures. But. Okay. So let's look at the before and after just now, just from all these changes. We haven't touched the skin yet. So the proportions were a little bit off. Maybe you should have measured a little bit. Now everything seems, this part of the face seems to be a part of the light environment. And the shoulders were really, really asymmetrical. Now they just seem to be sitting on some steady, steady skeletal symmetry. And the secondary light source here really made a difference. Also, we've got lots of white up here. Maybe you want to involve it. This white, however, I might not want to involve it because in the secondary light source we might not do this or this because um, it looks very pretty, but what happens is you're involving an abstract object with a non-abstract object. So you might want to, uh, it's a stylistic choice, you might want to avoid that entirely and just keep it feeling very uh, cut out, very free to Kahlo. I'm going to add it in, but very, very gently. Just a slight suggestion that the white around has been considered into the light environment, which is really important um, to, to respect the light environment first. That's the thing you ask first. Whenever you don't know what to do when your canvas is empty, just ask, where is my light source? That's the thing that really changes paintings. So I'm just going to involve it just a little bit, but again, this is your choice. This is your it's the, the style is governed by your creative force. So you might not want to involve the, the, the wedding dress into the the realistic um, sort of neighborhood of the painting, and just separate those two. But a, a bit of secondary light source brings out the shape of the nose, no doubt. Also. This all goes back to the basics. We, if we go back to the basics, we'll find answers very, very quickly. So I'm going to go into a lightened layer. And I'm going to lighten the side of the nose here with this shade. 
all the no's. Even though her skin is dark, a dark a dark spot is a dark spot. So the side of her nose, especially considering the light is coming in from the side, should not be so darkened that it's almost darker than the areas here, which are true dark spots. So once you decide, okay, this is going to be the shade dedicated to the socket, the shade dedicated to the darkness behind her, the shade dedicated to all the dark spots, you have to respect that. You can't use that shade anywhere else. That's a choice you made. So when we're deciding what shade to throw everything else in, we just look at how dark we've already gone and just make sure we're always above that. So this dark spot right here, that's what I'm going to use for the, the nostrils. The lips are a little bit outside of their orbit as well. I love the color you used for the lips. Don't outline. You don't need it. So right here, this dark spot in the eye, that's going to be the dark spot I use, the exact shade, exact color I'm going to use for the nostrils. It's The consistency of these rules is amazing. The, the, the how important these rules are is it changes the painting. That's why doing 14 day challenges is it changes the way you draw forever and for the best. Because you know, you begin to memorize exactly what kind of values belong to which parts of the face in certain light source situations. You never make those mistakes again. The way you draw faces becomes a lot more precise and the shadows you choose are more thought out. Instead of just scattering a bunch of shades around and forming a nose and forming a pair of eyes, you really think about the implications of that one specific shade you chose compared to the general map of grayscale and the grayscale ladder you've used everywhere else. You don't just add any shade without thinking about it. That's the sign of a, not screen, lighten please, a sign of, a, of an artist that really thinks as they draw instead of just zoning out. So I'm just trying to fix up the nose in that with that in mind always respecting your contrast ladder, your dark spots, the presence of the light source, what's really dark and what's not. You don't need to disconnect this entire half. You, what's happened with your three-quarter view rendition is that you've disconnected the entire half here, the three-quarter view. Some of you are very afraid of the three-quarter view, where this is what you paint first and everything else comes after. So she's got a bit of a an eye bag, so I'm just going to add it in there very gently. Just a, a young, a young, a youthful eye bag instead of an actual sign of age. Just the one that is genetic. Even babies have eye bags. <clears throat> okay, so what's next up is the fact that you've got the whites of the eyes. The whites of the eyes on darker skin isn't that white. Um, it's actually much darker, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to darken this on a new layer and show you what happened to the skin tone. Everything is suddenly matched. So now when we go in and erase away only the high points of the eyeballs, it's going to come with a lot of realism to it. Because even then, even the shade of the eye has become a specific shade that we've thought about in comparison to the contrast ladder, to the general map of light. So I've darkened that. Now when I bring in the whites of the eyes, I'm going to use the same white in, in, the, in, the, in the dress, in the wedding dress. It's going to feel like a real reflection because if this white of the spectral, of specular light, if this white is this white and it's as white as the white of the eye, you're telling me the white of the eye is as bright as the sunlight reflection or the light reflection on water? That's impossible. This is material. This is matter. And this is water. This is the reflection of the water on it. This is not something we can this can be surgically removed, this can't be surgically, it's not tangible, this is, is goes off when the lights are off, but this is still there, meaning this has a set value that it can't go higher than, but this can go very, very bright because it's water, it's water reflecting light, it's light essentially. So I'm going to cast the shadow of the upper eyelid on top, and this right here, you've got the, the, the circle of the eye, not separated from the inner the inner corner. 
And this distant eye is a little bit representational. You've kind of got that kind of pointed edge that comes from memory of eyes or the symbol of eyes. Next step would be to remember simple rules. Darker skin does not mean that there isn't going to be a, a flesh color for the inner waterline. It's going to be there. We need to make sure it's there. Not this bright though, I'm going to erase some of it away. Did you see what you've done? You've outlined. Maybe she's wearing makeup. Who knows? But I'm going to just bring in that pink very gently, erasing away what's left over. And what we want to do, this blue that's being reflected on the skin, this, th this is there for a reason. What I'm going to do is get that blue and paint it over everything, including her eyes, because this has become the wash of her skin tone. So as you know, when you're painting Caucasian skin or tan skin, what happens is that we, um, we make everything a little bit beige, even the white of the eyes. So what I'm going to do is do that as well. I'm going to paint that blue over the lips, over everything here. Except for the areas you've made orange, that's a very good observation you did. It's a very good job. Okay. So I'm going to merge that. Actually, let me show you before, after. It's a little... Actually, let me erase some of the... Kind of cooled it down, but not too much. I don't want too much. It's, it's unified the color palette. This eyebrow is a little bit more thin than the other one. I'm just going to thicken this one. And you've got asymmetrical eyebrows, like very, very asymmetrical. Just want to make sure they're all telling the same story on either side. <clears throat> okay, and then finally, hi what hair is reflective no matter what kind of skin tone you have. So I'm going to raise the value of the hair here on this part that's under the on switch going to bring in just a little bit of upper eyelid shade because that upper eyelid is still very visible. Just a little over here. It is not an Asian eye, that's the thing. It's just a hooded eye. That's It's a kind of a mix between Caucasian eye and Asian eye. And the close, the more of these rules, the basic rules of function, the inner eye corner, making the eye circular, making the eyeball not so not so bright, all of that is fundamental. But what it's done is made everything realistic. But it's also preserved what you've drawn. So it's not, it doesn't ruin your painting to bring in these rules and memorize them. Actually writing them down on a paper and just hanging them up in front of your computer or your workspace. Now we just have to think about which areas of the, before I bring in the yellow of the light source, which areas are the brightest in the face. And these are areas of the nose. Very, very oily. That's all the way up there, I don't know why. This area here, all the hot spots, and you always want to build it up. You don't want to just use, use it all. And the more you do this, the more reflective it'll be. So reflective skin doesn't just mean you've chosen the, the, the surrounding um, environment colors. You've also made it very, very shiny. So there's a, a serious spike in the highlights between all of the midtones. And all these areas, you want to also bring them in with um, to complement the beauty as well. So in makeup, the equivalent of this is shimmer for the cheekbones. So got a little bit over here and over here. And don't forget the chin. The chin is just as much involved in all of this. It's just way less bright than everything else. <clears throat> and then you've got cast shadows, which are really, really important. So you got to look out for those. Cast shadows are very difficult to detect in, low, in darker skin because the skin can only go so dark on itself. So when there's cast shadows of a nose on this skin, sometimes it's a little bit more faded. There isn't enough brightness in the skin to show it off. But there is definitely cast shadows. There are definitely cast shadows right here. And the rules are all still the same. Now let's go back to basics. All of the shadows have a purple to them. So a coolness.
all of the mid-tones have a redness to them, so this orange here comes right around here and wraps right around. So that brown, that, that purple that you have, doesn't just sit everywhere. And I'm going to bring down that brown, I mean that purple, and replace it with this brown color. And all of the highlights, the severe highlights, get the yellows. And the yellows in this case, the yellow doesn't no longer exists after below a certain value. Like, does this yellow still look yellow down here? So you have to find the midtone level or the highlight level. It's all the way here. The highlight is this dark because the skin is so dark. We move to yellow. There's no yellow here. There's just this. So we go to the next best color that is still saturated in this level, and that's the oranges. So we're not going to just bring in a solid orange. We're going to bring in a yellowish orange a little bit higher than we want because we're using color layer and that's the color we throw over the highlight so this is correction, this is color correction, it might not read this would be a color that I chose way ahead of time if I was painting like if I was painting this from scratch but this is the color you choose, so you have to think about the next best color that's beside that yellow that you wanted, so way less blues but I am going to erase away wherever there was a bit of shine. I'm going to erase away so that we have those blues back. So it's about balancing the mid-tones, which you already have, to deal with in skin tones, and then adding the environment. Okay. Just want to make sure we have the shadow of the upper eyelid on the lower part of the eye. This happens no matter what kind of eye is there. It really adds that realism because the, the eyelash, eyelash is there no matter what skin tone you have. What we want to do is constantly remem remember these, these rules. So no matter what we're painting, we're always going to paint the most realistic version of it while still preserving our style or habits or whatever you want to call them. Okay, for the lips, I feel like they're just a bit too uh, abstract right now. You need to create a depression. It's like a gradual depression for the lips, not just a, a flat dot, because that's really not going to create the feeling of a, a fold in the skin. What we want to do is show off a fold in the skin. That's exactly what we want. So that, that means we have to slowly come into the, the shadow. So shrinking our brush, the slower we get, I mean the closer we get to the dark spot. So it's not just a flat dot, but it's like a valley. And then we've got this highlight right here. And this highlight right here. So this is very, very dark skin, so dark that it reflects kind of with a really uh, bluish or eggplant kind of uh, color the surrounding environment, but it still has all the basics. All the basics are still there. Yellow skin, not yellow, but more yellow than the base tone that you chose, which could be blue influenced. You have to find a way to make those two complementaries work together. Color this here cools down. The further you get from the light source, the cooler everything gets. As for the for the neck, I think we just need to really balance all of this. Oops. Normal. We just really need to balance um, this bit here. If this is the cast shadow, there isn't going to be any severe highlight in this area. I'm just going to smudge this away. So before, after. So you have a little bit of a, a style going on, but it all seems to be pulled up as if a string was pulling it up. And after. This, this, this goes all the way up. This highlight. Because the, 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 the veil is getting closer and closer to her face, and the closer it gets, the brighter this reflection gets. Sorry I'm not looking at the comments, I'll look at them in a second. 
Okay, so before, after. So I kind of brought her jaw back in. I kind of just recentered her jaw. What I'm going to do now is just darken everything just a little bit with my with the burn tool. And that's going to bring back shine because sometimes we overdo it and try to bring the shine back by going too high. But if you go too high, you leave the skin tone range. And that makes no sense anymore because she's a dark skinned girl. So she can't have certain kinds of values painted on her because that's not possible. Her skin's too dark to ever spike that, that way unless it was brought in with paint. So that's not going to happen. So what we do is we try to make sure all the values that we do bring in are passing or are come with the idea that they all have to be matched together. They all have to, before we bring in any kind of highlight, we have to make sure that that highlight is, is reasonably within the actual skin tone she's in. So we can go this high, we can go this dark, but we can't go if the skin tone is here. On average, the skin tone is here, and we use this kind of highlight. That's not possible. Paint would do that. Other things that might need a little bit of highlight and reflection to them is the lips. So that's why I recommend this beautiful balance between abstraction and realism. It looks really, really nice. Uh, you might want to be careful with this highlight you have on her eye. It's a bit high. So before, after, just brought the jaw back in. Careful with those blues. Used a bit of blue. Um, it, it looks very nice because it it looks like an abstract painting, but I have a feeling you were trying to go for lots of realism compared to the rest of this. Uh, this painting is a painting. Honestly, I'd hang this on my wall. It's so beautiful. Uh, just like this. But I'm always trying to promote constant remembrance of the, of the rules and realism and all of that. The way it is, it's just fine. If, if you want to keep it that way, if you want to ignore some realism for a little bit. This would be a little brighter. And we have, get closer and closer to realism, the more we reinforce the dark spots as being only the, the darkest areas. Everything else, all the details that we bring in. So only here where the, where the on switch touches is where we would detail. All the other details that come after are easier now, more accessible, because we've made such a good plate with all our values. So... Flipping that, I'm seeing stuff I didn't see before. So I'm probably just going to use a lightened layer. This is all that bothers me. There are some other issues here, like between the eyebrows, they're still not balanced perfectly. Um, but uh, before, it was real deviation from the rest. And the nose was a little bit dark outside of the value. I wouldn't change the. I wouldn't change the painting. I would just flip this. I would probably just do that. Where am I? Is that up? Because that had a hole in it. <clears throat> okay. I would just do this. Center her more. Her shoulders are a little bit more centered. But again, this is, it feels very, I can't, uh, it reminds me so much of Frida Kahlo style. This is just a little bit more realism in the structure, more skeletal presence in the face, a little bit more realism in the eyes. They'll feel like they can blink because of that shadow. Um, a little bit more um, realism signatures like the waterline being pink. The other cheek being a little bit more involved in the, in the highlights. So it's your choice, really, which you, what you want to do with your with your painting. Like I said, how much realism you really want to overlap on top of all the abstraction. But all together, it's such a beautiful painting. I kind of ruined this with my liquify. Let me just straighten that up. It feels it feels like a like something anybody would hang on their wall. So your choice. Uh, I'm gonna fly in this. If you want this image back, uh, message me on Facebook and I'll give it to you. Um, the light source is supposed to be blue, yes. Oh, the light source is supposed to be blue. If the light source is fully blue, like actual blue light source, everything would be blue. Um, everything would have a blue hint over it. Everything would have uh, a blue wash 
So remember, when you're choosing, it's a very big choice that you're making if you're giving the light source an actual color. It's massive. It changes everything. The form is still the same, but if the light source has a color to it, um, then that means the light source is less bright than usual. Because in order to get a light source to be blue, what we have to do is dim it a little bit. Everyone write that back to me. Colored light sources are dimmer than whiter light sources because white can't hold any color in it. In order to get some blue through that light source, we have to dim it with a filter. The dimming of the filter with the filter brings a color with it. So if we want a yellow light source, it'll be light, way less dim, but it'll be a little bit dim than white, a little bit more dim. If we want green, we have to go a little bit dimmer. If we want red, we have to go dimmer. Light just doesn't work just like that. You just bring in a color and apply it in. So if it's blue, it's a much dimmer light source, way less form visible. So that's why we keep blue ambient secondary light sources on the side. We keep them as secondary, not as primary. We always want the off-white kind of light source because it allows all the real colors to come through. It doesn't come with any identity of its own, so we get to see the skin tone in all its glory. And then if you want to bring in that ambient light, we can do that. We can bring in a secondary light source on an opposite angle, an opposing angle, revealing some of the shadows that have been cast by the primary. Okay, so I wanted to look at this next. Um, when I draw eyes, when I, when I paint eyes, this is what I do. This is what Istabrak, okay, does, all right? Wow, that was so cocky of me, but... All right, so this is what this is an eye, a very very basic kind of eye, circular. Then you've got the waterline. Very very simple sketch of an eye. This is separate. This is separate. This is the ball. Probably have a little bit of a crease, maybe two creases. All right, this is what I do. Everyone watching? Is everybody watching? Okay. This is a hard round brush that comes with Photoshop. Right click with my pen this is what I do. I don't, I don't do this to draw that because, I, look at this, I, I don't do that because what happens is I am, for every little wobble I have in drawing the, in the pupil, for every little wobble, for drawing the iris, for every little wobble I, I am losing realism, minus realism, minus realism, minus realism, minus realism. You want to have something that is relatable, you keep that circle because that is an actual signature of the form and function of an eyeball. It wouldn't make any sense if our eyes looked like this. You know, animals have this because they, they, they read light differently. They don't need as much info as we do or I don't know what it is that makes them like that. But we humans need this perfect circle. The eye would not function as a joint that it is. It acts like a joint. If it wasn't spherical, this wouldn't make any sense. We would have real empty spots in our vision if our eyes were triangles, if, it, if the pupils were triangles. You know, it wouldn't make any sense. So, I mean, if they're not this interesting shape and they're not this interesting shape, what's this shape? What evolutionary mistake led to it being this wobbly? It just makes zero sense in so many ways. It just looks like an egg. Don't draw egg, <laughs> what, sunny side up pupils. There we go, That's you can quote me on that. Don't draw sunny side up pupils, please. Because what happens is it, you're, it, you're gonna overcompensate. You're gonna bring in these crazy lashes. You're gonna do all this crazy stuff because you're gonna think, oh my god, something's wrong with the eye. I don't know what it is. I'm just gonna keep working here. Hopefully I'll fix it. Oh man, I need to go heat up my car. It's so cold today. Man, okay, maybe we should draw another one. I'm kind of giving up on this painting. And by the time you're done thinking about what's made this eye so unrealistic, you have this big kind of like a, I don't know what it is, like a straw umbrella for eyelashes instead of focusing on what's really the problem, which is this. So please, 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 please don't make, don't take any shortcuts with the circular, what's the word, circularness, S circular, um, uh, what's the, what's the, Euler of a circle. It's that. How do you say that in a word? Don't take any shortcuts in making the pupil spherical. All right? It's not spherical. It's not. That's not the word. But anyways, we need to fix this right now. So let's go back and fix that and see if there were really any issues, any other issues sitting around because this thing was such a big issue. It's it's standing in the way of me being able to see anything else that's wrong. I will not be able to tell. 
unless I fix this. And this goes without saying, the spherical shape of the pupil is just as important as the spherical shape. Um, no, the spherical shape of the eyeball itself is just as important as the pupil being spherical. It's all spherical. It's all just one sphere and another sphere and another sphere. So you have to keep that beautiful ladder of perfect circles there because it needs it. The anatomy needs it. Okay? Sphericality, circulature, <laughs> roundosity. Thank you, <laughs> Jeffrey. Those are beautiful. <laughs> I'll use those. Don't forget about the roundosity of, of the pupil. Right? Once we fix that, everything becomes accessible to us. It's not so in the way anymore. Alright, so I need to zoom out because I want to know how to make her gaze. So I need to make sure she's gazing in the right direction. When we want to do that, we want to make a character look at something, actually look at something in the, in the like nearby. We have to cross the eyes just a little bit. So this is a beautiful painting. You have beautiful colors. But that, that issue with the eye was really getting in the way. So this eye is a little bit smaller. Whoa! I'll make this a little bit bigger. Liquify is so rogue. Look at this. It's like every time it's a different size. And there we go. So now all that's left is us really looking at the use of these 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 lashes. They're not important. They, we don't need to depend on them anymore to bring us that realism because we fixed that issue. So now the only lashes we need are lashes that just correspond with the growth pattern on this side and just making them spherical. I mean making them symmetrical. I'm also going to, since this eye is kind of hooded and it's a little bit droopy, I'm just going to lower this one a little bit to see more of the upper skin of the upper eyelid. That's kind of how you make something look droopy or sleepy. You just show more upper eyelid than usual. And then these lashes are moving downward. She's got those downward facing lashes. That reminds me, I need to do some more yoga. <laughs> downward facing dog. I should do yoga today. I think I'm going to do some yoga. All right. Remember the outer lashes are longer than the lower ones. And we're just creating a pattern. We're not drawing. Listen, guys, we're not doing this. All right. We're not doing this for the lashes. We're creating a pattern, one on top of the other. We're creating a texture. So lashes, everyone write this back to me, lashes are texture. Around, around a circularity, non-cubeness. <laughs> yeah. What scream? There was a scream? I screamed? Um, we must not speak negatively of the cube. <laughs> <laughs> Overly defined eyelashes look cheap to me. Am I the only one? No, Tiv, you're not. Um, they look very, very cheap. There's something I used to depend on. If I could just get my uh, expansion drive fixed, I can show you guys all the crap I used to draw. I used to be so bad. I used to depend on lashes to make um, the paintings work. So um, lashes are a texture. They will read better as a texture because our human eyes aren't so strong that we see every single individual lash between each other. We don't have that crazy um, resolution in the way we see things. Our brain takes shortcuts. So you have to remember that when you're painting. That's the same thing. And People aren't going to see every single lash. You don't give them every single lash. What people usually see is just a texture. So that's what's going to work. Next up are the basics. What's next? Can anyone tell me? The lag is too long, but... Um, it's something to do with the upper eyelid, so someone tell me what it is while I work on other stuff. So the water line here needs to be a little bit more clear. No hair, nothing on this water line, nothing sits on this water line. Okay. And then just the shadow, so she is wearing makeup, so I'm just going to take advantage of that and use it to show off some form. That's really what makeup is. When girls put makeup on the lower eyelid or do stuff like that, they're just um, they're faking a shadow. Detail relief, yes, exactly. Um, also, lashes are textures. Uh, cast shadow under eyebrow. Uh, cast shadow is the right word, but that's that's not what I'm talking about. All right, this needs to be over here. 
This needs to be over here. You have some green under the eyelid, eyelid, but I'm not sure where it's coming from. Her skin is too dark. She's like a bit of an olive skin tone, very Middle Eastern kind of face. With the way you drew the eyes, I mean, I could be wrong. The, the drop shadow, does the nose look a little flat to anyone else? Yes, it does. There's no dark spots in that for the lips either. Uh, shadows under brow bone. Shadow under the lid. Yes, notice. Um, good for you, no Lotus. Uh, not notice. Lotus. Um, uh, here's a sticker. Hey. <laughs> Next time you guys answer a question right, I will kiss you guys. I will give you a kiss over over the mic. I am, I am that kind of teacher. <laughs> oh my god. So this shadow right here is going to do a world of difference. Because what's going to happen is we've introduced cast shadows. Like, whoa, cast shadows? Wow, this must be a real face because it has cast shadows on it. Look what happened to those eyes. My god, I could cry. Because it, it's just such an amazing little tool. And it all started by making the eyes circular a little bit. So I'm just going to throw in some water. Something. Like, I have to, I have to throw in something because it feels a little bit empty. Alright. Lower eyelid. Guess it's on space. Don't, don't kind of just... Everything has its own little respective land in the geography of the face. Don't overlap bits over each other for that reason. The nostrils, what I have to do now is find a skin tone that matches so it's both red and so remember in my video how to paint skin, I, I, I darken skin on a curve and then lower down to reds. So I've cooled down the shadow as well as darken the, the skin tone. So how do you cool down shadows? Can anyone tell me? Uh, how do you cool down skin tones and darken them? How do you bring in the cool? How do you bring in the purple? Okay, so I'm just shaping out these nostrils. It's okay if our class goes more than 6.30. I just hope, I mean 6 o'clock, I just hope that YouTube doesn't cut me off because I, <laughs> I did the event from 5 to 6, so I don't know. I'm going to throw a shadow under the nose. I'm going to throw some highlights up here. I'm going to connect this. Make it a little bit less. Warn us before you start smooching us. <laughs> um, please don't. I have a feeling that would kill all of us headphone users. Um, no. Tele anime. Wrong. Wrong, wrong, wrong. You don't add gray. Um, the mouth also seems kind of uh, tacked on rather than extended from the face. Extruded. Yes, soggy. That's true. Color relativity. Um, no, I just explained it. I just explained it. How to cool down a skin tone color. Okay, so I'm just going to keep doing that. I'm going to use this exact same shade for the lip corners. Her lips are very, very asymmetrical, but I'm not going to touch them because they're kind of cute but that way. I'm going to keep them that way, but I am going to give the lips a little bit of a trim on the side there. The asymmetry is wonderful in this case. I wouldn't want to touch it at all. But we're just building up the dark spots. And now we want to go really, really dark for the darkest darks of that cave, and we just... I just showed how to do it. <laughs> uh, so more red, exactly. You don't bring in purple. Red has a little bit of purple in it. It's the reason why purple is purple. Red and blue make purple. So that's how we cool down skin tones and move them toward the red. You can't go, you can't jump from peachy oranges all the way to purples just like that. You have to pass through the doors of each color. And sometimes just going through the, to, to your neighbor, you'll get what you need instead of going all the way downtown. I love my metaphors. Don't hate me. <laughs> All right, a little bit of highlight on the lower lip. A little bit of darkness on the upper lip. And it's kind of coming together. 
And this highlight here, again, all the signatures, all the areas where we usually have highlights, that's why we throw some highlights now, just to close off all of this form and bring it together. Right. Put this here. Put that there. Cast shadow there. All right, so for the before and after, Actually, um, these eyes are both asymmetrical. Still, I'm just going to fix this. She is wearing a little bit of makeup, so I'm just going to make that makeup uniform. I'm not so worried about severe cast shadows on the face, as some of you have suggested, because it's kind of like a, like a really open light. It's a, kind of more of a universal diffused light source situation than a... Uh, a pin light. So before, do you see the problem with having wonky um, egg yolk eye pupils? When we fix those, everything comes together. We didn't change anything else. Just dark spots and basics. That's it. And now this is, this is probably what, like four years apart in skill? All you have to do is learn the basics. You'll skip four years of wasting your time on masterpieces if you just learn the basics in a study or two. If I was told that in 14 days and 20 days of doing studies I would improve more than I would ever improve in three years while being distracted by university I would have done that five years ago but I didn't have that and I'm here to tell you guys to do it today. Think about the basics. You want to be better at drawing a face and everyone here wants to learn how to draw a face better. Everyone wants to learn how to draw a face so just learn the basics of it. Don't take shortcuts with the pupil of the eye. Trust me, you'll regret it. Okay, so there's that. Flattened. If this was a face study, if this was a portrait study, you know, uh, do a little bit of planning. Okay, so for this, I'm just going to talk a little bit about beauty um, and expression. Just a little bit, though. I have videos dedicated to both of that evenly. Alright, so what we have here is a dark upper lip area. That's the first one of the one of the bad moves you've done. Then we've got a symbolic eye, which are very very close together. This, uh, the eyes are very close together. So that's decreased from the beauty. Remember, we don't want to bring eyes together. We just want to. Actually, is there a way I can do this in Liquify? <clears throat> we want to create that triangle as much as possible. So what's going to happen is, whoa, these two eyes are going to be moving apart. This lip is going to be way less exaggerated because you're adding realistic shading on cartoony expression. That's where you go wrong. The symbolic eye, I'm going to leave that alone so I don't have time to paint it over. Just remember, don't, um, basically what you're drawing is this. but on a girl you were drawing this. This doesn't read very well. You have to make changes. You have to make all kinds of changes to make that to make anatomy do that. So I'm gonna add a little bit of a shadow down here and get rid of that upper tilt. Um, this is gonna get darkened. There's too much white on the eyes and the lips are gonna have a little bit less of a symbolic expression. It's good to bring in symbols with expression. I have a whole video on that. Please watch it if you want to get a little bit better on expressions. But um, you, you can't go too symbolic. You can't just bring in a cartoony face and expect the, the realism to match. This is between that. We just need a cast shadow here. You made the entire upper upper nose area a little bit too too dark, I mean upper lip area beneath the nose a little bit too dark. Now that we've fixed the face, everything else is sort of going to fall into place because the shoulders are too large. Everything, excuse me, everything else is too large. <laughs> I've been fighting back a burp. <laughs> I don't care, I'm not embarrassed to say it, we all burp. <clears throat> Sirak, shut up Sirak, TMI. <laughs> but yeah. Cast this shadow. 
chin light. And then the eyebrows. The eyebrows are also doing something else. So now the face is a little bit more soft, a little bit more feminine. And I'm saying feminine because look at those boobies. Look at the color of that dress. Look at the pose. This girl is clearly happy to be a woman. All right? So we want to reinforce that with the face. If you want laughing, if you want like smiling and like really, really happy, I'm so happy, I just won the lottery, I'm so happy, you can add in laugh lines, but they can't be that, that thick, they can't, they, I mean that, that thin, they have to be very, very thick, very thick brush stroke. And then we close off the face to reinforce the triangle, and then we increase the size of the head. Let me just show you where you were before. Before, after. Very masculine almost because the eyes were so close together. You had that shadow up there which red is a mustache to me or like a three o'clock shadow or five o'clock shadow. I don't know what o'clock it is. It's just, it's just later in the afternoon, evening or something. Right? The lower chin, look at that, very wide. That's very. That's a symbol for male faces. Eyes close together. The nose is fine. Uh, wide lips. Everything you did the opposite of as, as of you, what you should have done. Eyes are far apart. Smaller mouth. It's kind of just like a triangular chin. Just closed off. <clears throat> These are basics. And then you're going to ask me, okay, Sarak, okay, fine, you've been talking about basics all day. Can you tell me how to study them? Uh, you do studies. You don't do masterpieces. You do studies. Meaning you stop doing this. Stop that. I know it's fun. I know. I know it's fun. I know you're all here because you really want to draw something and show it to Mama and Papa. Show it to your friends. And they'll all be like, oh, my God, you're such a great artist. I love you. I know you guys want that in your lives. But you won't get it until you, 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 you earn it. you got to earn it. So studying a little bit. Just doing a face study every single day. You know, just a little just a little scribble for 30 minutes. I'm just going to, you know, test out how pretty this looks. Okay. La, 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 la. Hey, Creek Tea community. Hey, guys. Can you just take a look at this? Everyone's going to talk because they're all awesome and they're all sweet and they will all give you something. And they'll be very constructive. And trust me, I will fall down very hard on people who give you bad feedback, but I, I'm, I'm looking, I'm constantly, okay? So that means that you're going to take that information back and you're going to apply those corrections. Next day, do another one. You don't have, it doesn't have to be a 14-day challenge. You don't even have to call it that. That's scary. You know, just watch some of my videos. Watch other videos. It's not self-promotion. Watch other videos. You know, mess around with the triangle. Invert the triangle. Mess around with the ogre. That's how you study. You just try stuff every single day. You actually bring in the stuff and try it. Get this, lay it over your drawing and see what you can do with the face that you have. I see these because I see the mistakes because I've done those studies. I've taught those studies. So it's not it's not going to be difficult for you to learn them as well. Trust me. Trust your brains to find to find a faster way to do a task. You're not going to spend two hours on a face every single time you draw a 14-day challenge. It's going to be two or three hours or longer just on the first day. It gets easier. Sorry. It gets easier as you go. Okay, so someone's calling me. Don't feel like picking it up. All right. Um, I don't have time for the rest of these. So I'm going to just leave them for next time, but I hope today that, I hope what, what we talked about today helped. Can anyone summarize what we covered today uh, between both critiques or all those critiques? <clears throat> yes, Jeff is great at critiques. Um, let me look at real quick the critique community and see who's graduated the 14 day challenge so that we can all congratulate them together. Um, I know Tiv is congr uh, congratulate you, Tiv. But uh, what did you learn the most from the 14-day challenge? If you can summarize it in a sentence, what was the most beneficial thing for you about it? I never knew about the triangle. I never knew. Oh my God, I have been enlightened. It's all I talk about, Nathan. I talk about it all the time. <laughs> I'm always talking about the triangle and and then sort of the triangle of beauty, which is really just a, an, another way of saying the the golden ratio. Um, so. Uh, uh, you have to um, stick around, I guess, to get to get more of this stuff. 
I, I, I repeat a lot of the stuff that I say through each video, so don't feel like, oh, she said it once, she's never going to say it again. I, I repeat a lot. Ask everybody. <laughs> um, but let's let's take a look at the 14 day challenge. This person's on day eight. This is awesome. I think comparing day one, and I remember seeing your day one, the eyes were very, very off. This eye is always the hardest to draw in, th in, in three quarter view. So really, really good job. Kudos to you for taking on a three-quarter view 14-day challenge. It's not easy. Keep going. Keep pushing. I don't know which day this is, but uh, if, if it even is a 14-day challenge. Um, let me see if I can find the graduates. I think it was just Tiv that graduated recently. And this person who's almost graduating. But day one, day one, day one. Lots of people trying. I'm so proud of you guys. This is it. This is the 14 day challenge for Tiv. All I recommend is not making the eyes so crossed. Now it looks like she's looking at a butterfly really, really close to her forehead. But other than that, I don't know where your day one is. I think you have day one somewhere. Maybe if I go to your page, I'll go on it privately, don't worry. Um, day five, day one. Okay, so we're comparing day one to day 14. You're a lot more confident with your values. The lower eyelid is definitely um, definitely present. There was no lower eyelid. It didn't feel like it can blink. It was very uh, it was like a realistic anime type of thing you were drawing. You're very, very good at blending. So you had that down. But now look at the look at the hat look at how the, the nose, which is the highest point in the entire um, face. It's like the highest altitude. Look at how you represent it now with a nice clean square. Look at that. And before there was none of that. It was all very general, very topical, very careful. Now you've closed off the temples a little bit. The ears need to be tucked into the side a little bit more. The pigmentation on the lips is really a lot more a lot more careful. The, the dark corners you have them, the, the, the dark spots. It's definitely a successful 14-day challenge. Um, just just those inner corners. The, the I mean, they not the inner corners. The um, the eyes being this this crossed or this uh, close to each other um, need to be just a little bit less less crossed. That's the only issue that I see. Upper lip should be generally darker than the lower lip. You always want to draw without makeup in mind. At the time when they're both at the same value, that's lipstick. So I don't want you to constantly memorize lipstick. Uh, let me just show you before I leave. So don't always accidentally draw a certain kind of makeup in your paintings all the time because what happens is it kind of feels like every character, even the male characters that you're going to draw are going to have lipstick on. So we always want to be careful with that. So the lower lip, whoa, the lower lip gets a little bit less and the upper lip. The upper lip is darker because the upper lip is part of the lower, part of the downward facing uh, features. So they look down away from the light. And then we've got the ears not being tucked away far enough. So I'll fix that real quick for a quick before and after. So you see, you made all these mistakes, but did you make them on, I'm sorry, I didn't see your uh, description, your sentence on what you improved on the most. You can uh, you can send it again to me. I'm sorry, I didn't see it. Um, but you see, did you make all these mistakes on on a masterpiece? You made all these mistakes on the safety of 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 a, of a study. So you got to make all those mistakes without having to go on stage and present these mistakes to your audience, which is what happens with a study with a masterpiece, which doesn't happen with a study. A study is a study. It's a nice and safe environment to learn a rule. This whole area here darkens into the quarters and the temple. This shadow kind of connects up here, connects up there. Tuck the ear away. Tuck in the other ear in a sec. But let's just jump into liquefy really, really quick just to show off what happens with crossing the eyes too much like that. So we want to just Make the eyes look like they're looking in a certain direction. Just trying to increase the density. But we also don't want to make them look like they're always looking at something immediately in front of them. But we also don't want to make them look like they're zoning out. 
like they've been possessed or something. We want to have a nice balance. So you're, all that's left is just for you to push yourself a little bit further just to make sure you don't draw the eyes cross every single time because this will be a dangerous habit that you memorize. This will be something that you will have to fight all the time. Uh, the shadow here, a little bit darker dark spots. You just have to, there, this shadow right here is a little bit too close uh, to the right, to the shadows around it. The, the reason why dark spots are so important is because they're an actual cavity that nothing else on the face can do but the dark spots. So they're very, very important for building form. This is a cast shadow. It should not be similar to the values here. This area right here should be a little sharper because that skin kind of just cuts off j just generally very, very quickly and becomes the lower, the lower eyelid socket skin. So what did Tev say? Um, um, you're not good with words, okay. <laughs> uh, um, your streams are significantly worse in quality now that you're barely interacting with the chat. I really wish you restored your Twitch account. Probably won't take much to resolve the issue. You're very uh, presumptuous, Maverick. I guess that's why you call yourself a Maverick. I should do the force intention of draw the exact same face over and over again. Yes, you do. Um, uh, Mav, she's tried. We've all emailed them as well. Um, um, okay. Does anybody, does anybody answer the summarizing? Color lights are dimmer. Cooling skin goes to your neighbor. Red and study the basic. Excellent, BC. Thank you for that summary. Yeah, so this, this area here kind of needs to be a little bit sharper. I don't think the quality of my stream has decreased. I, I disagree with you. I think um, I try my best, even in, in uh, on Twitch, I tried my best to focus on the critique and then looked over at the chat. The chat can get a little bit um, wayward sometimes, so that's why I try to avoid getting too much into a conversation and not actually painting. So the quality, I think, is still there relative to the content, with content. Um, have to disagree with you. I think the general video quality as well is a lot better than Twitch. Thank you for your words. Thank you for your concerns. I'm trying to separate the cast shadow right now from everything else because it can't be shared in value. It's a cast shadow. It's not behaving like anything else on the face. It's separate. It belongs to something else. Okay, and now that we see that, um, there's a cast shadow right here on the, the socket that can't be anywhere else. Again, it can't be shared with anything else. You have way too much shadow right here. So what we want to do is not have you memorize uh, constantly a makeup-like face. There's always a shadow in between the eyes right there. So if you look at the before and after, just real quick. Less makeup. Do you notice it? Less makeup. And that's the kind of face I want you to memorize. Next up would be just to go a shade lighter for the highlights, for the lightest lights on the face. That would be sort of the next step in getting a full render and entering the full render kind of zone where you actually completed it. And it's very simple. It's just an on switch. And those are the areas that get the lightest lights. The forehead is very much involved. That's why I ask to draw bald people because once you have the hair on top, you'll know how to shade the hair as well because the hair will be part of that on switch. It'll get some of that light. Right, so before, lots of makeup after. I didn't fix this ear, but gotta hurry it up. Um, also, the eyes are less crossed. Do you see they're, they look like they're not looking at something? They're looking at the, the, the immediate front of them instead of something that is really, really close up to their head. So she's looking at, at something floating above her head, like a, like my mouse right now, she's looking at that. Instead of just looking forward at the mouse when it's this big. Thanks everyone for coming. Have a great day. Bye-bye.